Hi everyone, uh, it's been pretty good so far. I'm going to apologize, I'm a bit of an AV technician's nightmare because I don't like podiums. So the signals are going to be a pain and probably tracking me on the camera is going to be a bit of a pain too, but c'est la vie. Um, so a lot of what people have been talking about so far today has really gone in some interesting areas about sharing. You know, Jason uh, with the car share and you know, people sharing bikes, people sharing roads. Uh, I'd like to get into sort of a different area of sharing, which is instead of just sharing the spaces we see and how we get to places, what about sharing the places themselves? So go next. And just for an outline of what I'm going to be doing with you today, uh, we'll talk about incubators, so sort of a shared space for startup organizations. Um, what an opportunity for the Waterloo region it would be to actually try and develop more of these. Um, and then try and throw it back to you as to how you think you and city governments can actually come up with policies and plans that would make it more likely for us to actually develop as a cluster of incubators. And sort of in between those sessions, I'll, sections, I'll try and take some questions from you just, you know, clarify, get some conversation started, be a little less lecture-like. So. so, what's an incubator? Um, when I'm using the term incubator, I'm thinking of a space where different organizations, usually startups, can get together, share some of that space, often share some of the services, so some secretarial, maybe some accounting, uh, those other sorts of uh, uh, things that businesses need. Um, and what that incubator does, it allows those organizations to actually focus on what it is they do. So if you're a web design company, It'd be nice to focus on web design and not have to focus on web design and office management. It'd be nice to be a not-for-profit, starting up doing some environmental work and be able to focus on environmental work and not figuring out how you're going to pay for lighting. And what it also offers, and if anyone has worked as a freelancer or has worked on a job which is home-based, is it offers some social opportunities. So you're not just working by yourself, isolated. You have people you can turn to, you can network with, you can have that social support that people do get out of offices when they work for larger organizations that are better established. And I'll take us through three examples. Uh, one is the Ecotrust building in Portland because we are a lot of planning and policy people interested in municipal government and if Portland doesn't come up, it's a bit of a failure in a presentation. Second, the Center for Social Innovation in Toronto, which is very well established and uh, booming in terms of the interest in that model, uh, and very much a very successful example in Ontario. And then one we have locally, the Accelerator Center, uh, based just uh, outside of and kind of jointly with the University of Waterloo. Next. So, start with the uh, Ecotrust building in Portland. Um, the focus of all of the organizations that are working out of this building is environmental. It's sustainability. Uh, the two kind of, and it's a mixture of for-profit and non-profit, uh, the two real kind of keystone tenants there, one, Ecotrust, which is a fund that uh, buys buildings and retrofits them such that they are LEED, gold, and platinum certified. Um, so actually looking at integrating uh, historical buildings with more of a sustainable environmental uh, kind of spin to it. And also uh, the Municipal Portland Office of Sustainable Planning. What's kind of cool about this model is that because you have basically a real estate developer there who's working on the ground at restoring these heritage sites, and you have the people who are making the policies for sustainability, in Portland, informally they talk. There's a cafe, and you have other nonprofits there where people, you know, have their ears on the ground, can actually get that information to policymakers quickly, and the policymakers can talk to these people and go, okay, does this make sense? You know, we have an idea. Is this something that you think would be a good idea, or are you going to be fighting against it? It's just a really nice way of getting that, you know, getting that uh, kind of community feeling and getting that information circulating better. So next. Uh, the Center for Social Innovation started out, so this is on Spadina, basically it's Spadina and Queen in Toronto. 
Uh, started out as about 7,000 square feet, about, I guess we're looking about six, seven years ago. Uh, has moved to being about 45,000 square feet in the main building, plus they're buying, they've just bought and are working on a second building to create more space for tenants. Uh, so you're looking at dozens, I'm imagining probably over 100 organizations collectively are under the umbrella of the Center for Social Innovation right now. Um, it's a mixture of not-for-profit and social enterprise, uh, working in a number of different spaces. So next one. And the Accelerator Center, uh, next to the University of Waterloo. Tech-focused uh, startups, mostly made up of University of Waterloo graduates and their sort of immediate hangers-on. Um, university, not-for-profit, government partners are all there. Uh, and it's sort of the centerpiece of the research and technology park just, park just north of Columbia. Now this is a a, an idea that is set up to provide some support for the startups that tend to come out of this university ecology we have here and bring them to scale so that we can create another research in motion, another open text, another sand vine. Um, one of the specific characteristics of a lot of these incubator centers, um, and this is one that I think is particularly cool, in terms of both looking at that startup idea and also looking at long-term sustainability, is that a lot of people who work from home or telecommute don't actually have to be in that office the entire time. Um, there are places, you know, you've probably seen in cafes around town, people grab their laptop, they set up and basically use them as ad hoc offices. Well, this is just taking that one step further. So a hot desk allows you to set up in an office, give yourself some temporary space, converse with other people there, have your mailing address, have some files that you can keep on site, and also provides you with things that you would get out of a larger office. Meeting rooms, conference rooms, possibly even lecture halls at some places. And one of the nice things about hot desks is that even if you don't really want to go as far as to have your own cubicle in a place, uh, this is a way of starting up by going, you know, maybe I do want to go work in an office for five to 10 hours a week. It's enough for smaller organizations, poor organizations, startups to get in and really attach to that network of people around them. So next. Um, and one of the nice things about a lot of incubators um, is that because the tenants are focusing on their own organizations, are focusing on their own missions, the incubator itself gets to focus on making the space a space worth being in. Uh, as we just sort of heard, there's a lot of things that happen visually when you don't actually have people paying attention to the surroundings. And what this does is it actually gives some attention that people have to those surroundings that are focused just on that. Uh, these pictures are all taken from, uh, from an incubator, uh, 201 Richmond, which is in Toronto, conveniently enough, at 201 Richmond. Oh, 401? I thought it was 201. It was 401? I'm glad someone else is paying more attention than I am to this. Um, <laughs> and what, what's, what's nice about there is that basically a lot of the space is used by uh, a lot of the tenants there are artists, and a lot of the internal walls and hallways of this space basically function as ad hoc art galleries. Um, there's also a cafe there, and there's some programming that is run specifically for artists and youth engagement, which is what the picture on the far right is from. So next. So, starting point, are there any questions about this sort of incubator concept? Awesome, then we'll roll, oh yeah. Yeah, uh, sure, the, so the difference between an incubator versus an accelerator versus a, a shared kind of workspace. Um, it's tricky, there, there are a lot of terms where there's a lot of overlap, um, and so broadly, when I'm talking about incubators, I'm kind of talking about things that use all of them together. Usually there's more of an intentionality behind 
Uh, so an incubator, usually there's a bit more intentionality behind it being a place particularly geared towards startups. The accelerator, so the accelerator center is geared more towards organizations that have sort of gotten that fir over that first hump and are trying to move on to the next round of like VC funding. Um, and shared workspaces, so just a more broad co-location, uh, are places that you can rent, uh, but they don't necessarily have any intentionality behind them of bringing different organizations to scale or to stability. Uh, and some of them involve large organizations that maybe need a flying office somewhere, so you know you could have a couple of room desks, a couple of IBM desks, a couple of I don't know, McDonald's headquarters people all just sort of sharing a space out of convenience rather than anything else. So I, I think that's that's probably the most of where the difference comes in is just what the design what the purpose of the design is for. Right. So yeah. Um so um, explain it, sir. Mm -hmm. There are. I mean, the so one of one that's sort of not quite there, but is close to is the Center for Social Innovation. Initially, was mostly made up of nonprofits. Um, out of um, this is going to be talking more about student-based organizations, but on the campus of Queen's University. Um, there's a house that houses uh, their OPERG, Amnesty International, uh, their uh, GBLTQ Center. So there's about, I think there's seven or eight different organizations basically sharing a house there. Um, it's certainly something that different community groups have come from. And in fact, that's why I got interested in incubators initially was just that um, non-for-profits often have a very difficult time getting the spaces that they need to actually be able to fulfill their mandates well. Uh, and that sharing of resources that these, these incubators allowed, uh, to me, really spoke to filling in a potential gap there. Uh, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's why uh, you know the last, not this current round, but the previous round of expansions, the Center for Social Innovation, when they went from 7,000 square feet to their kind of mid-20,000 square feet, um, their waiting list was about 150, uh, sorry, they had about 200 uh, people apply. Uh, different organizations, mostly community-based, to get in there. And the waiting list, I think, was of the ones that even they accepted, was at about 40 or 50, even after that expansion, um, which is also part of the reason they kept expanding so quickly. So, all right, go to the next. Well, we'll, uh, we'll, have, we'll have another spot for questions, too, so. Uh, oh, okay. So some of this we already went through. Um, but some specifics about the value for a lot of the current innovators who will be using an incubator. Um, the first and most obvious kind of question, um, and it's sort of extended from, from the last one, is, is it actually cheaper than getting a traditional office? Um, and it's a bit counterintuitive, but usually it's not. It's not more expensive, it's usually about the same price as renting the equivalent amount of office space. Um, and we talked a bit about the hot desks and that being a great support for telecommuting. Uh, but what also really where the value of the incubators comes in isn't just the sharing of resources, it's the bringing of people together. It's people can share ideas, people can share referrals, people can collaborate on projects. Um, so it might be that I could be in an incubator space with five other organizations. We're all, we could all even be in the same industry. We could all be um, programmers. And one of my clients comes to me with a problem that I'm not actually able to, to, to design a solution to myself, but there's someone two desks over I know can. And I can make that referral more easily, and they can make referrals to me. So it's one of those things that can really increase opportunities for collaboration, uh, increase flexibility, and increase the potential size of the market or client base or donor base 
that the different people who are sharing space can have.